In this tutorial we're going to go through how to create sheets in model space in MicroStation. We commonly call this cutting sheets. The first thing you need to know before you begin trying to cut sheets is the size of the sheet that you want. That being the scale and the paper size. For this example we're going to be utilizing a 22 by 34 border at, at a 50 scale and I have referenced in our border in this drawing at a 50 scale. Now I want each of these top panel and this bottom panel to be individually cut in space. So what I'm going to do is on a level I am going to trace this rectangle. Now if I turn this reference off, I basically have what we call a clip pane. And I'm going to be working in a file that we call a clips file. This is just one method. You do not have to have a clips file for cutting sheets if you're able to keep up with your beginning and end, but it does come in handy for several different reasons that I'll show you. So now that I have my clip pane, so each sheet top and bottom can only fit on a 50 scale what can be seen inside of this rectangle. It allows me a visual reference. So I want to make that view a little smaller so I can see both views. And then you can see I've already done several on different streets, but this is a water project and I want to have a top pane and a bottom pane both being plan view. So it's very simple. I want to begin my sheets down here at station 10 plus not not and we're going to go north this way. So I'm going to copy actually I'm going to move this shape that we just traced over here. It looks like I've accidentally made it a fill. So now that I see that it's a fill, I'll drop it. And then I'll create it, make it a shape again. But this time I'm going to make sure my fill is off. And now it is a shape again. And I'll close view two. So you just orient these individual clip panes. however you want your sheet, however you want it to be displayed on your sheet. So I'll place it there at zero and then I'm going to rotate it to try to maximize. It's kind of, that looks at the right orientation. And I'm going to come down here and slide this down a little so I can make sure I'm not right on zero. And this way a little to center. And it's you just continue moving these up so I can see that my last station, whole station is 24 plus not not. So I'm going to copy this one that I just did. Move it up to an amount of overlap that you have on each sheet is arbitrary. You can be whatever you want or you could have zero overlap. It's totally up to the designer. And if you don't have a specific orientation you have to meet you can just continue to rotate them as necessary. In this case this road is pretty straight so I am able to use the same orientation. Here we go. So I'm going to move that to 6550. If I can get it snap, there we go. And now because I have this angle I'm going to rotate my border again. You can just continue this until you get all of the area that you want on your sheets or your sheet series covered with these clip panes. And 
regrettably it looks like I'm going to have a piece of a sheet uh, I'm not going to quite be able to get the whole thing which means I may have to go through here and try tweaking these and moving them about around a bit so that I don't have a sh another cut that's just got 10 feet on it and I don't think I'm going to be able to Not, so I'm just going to have to have a cut with a very small segment on it. Which in this, since this doesn't have a profile, these are just this is plan similar. It's only going to be plan views. That's not necessarily a bad thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we have our clips placed, starting from zero and going up. And next, we're going to create start cutting this up into sheets so I'll save this drawing and I will move over to my C file and we're going to save this as So now we have a blank drawing with nothing in it. <clears throat> now when it comes to cutting sheets it is important on how you group your drawings, your references. You're going to cut sheets by using a series of references and then trimming them accordingly. And the order, as we discussed in the previous tutorial, the order of your references is what will show up in your level display and they will show up in that order so it, they do not necessarily have to be grouped as in all of one type of reference and all of another but it does make things much simpler when you're trying to do level management the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I am going to attach this 09 PPR and I'm going to make it live nest. And the only reason I am doing this is so that I can see where the treatment last sheets were. I kind of like to keep my sheets in a somewhat straight line, and I don't like them to be on top of each other. So if I referenced in all my sheets, they would not all come in right on top of each other. So my beginning point is going to be right there. The next thing I will ref in my border. Which is right here. And it's a 50 scale. And I'm going to call it CDG-1. It's important, notice I put dash and one. You'll see why in a moment. Now it came in out in space. So I open up to and zoom extents. Oop. Put it back in top view and zoom extents. I got to find it. And then I will take the reference and I'm going to move it that location. So there's our border. Now the reason we cut clips we should know how many sheets we need. So let's go back to our clips and see how many panes we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cl clip panes. At two panes a sheet that is four sheets. So remember that. So we have four sheets. So I am going to copy this reference three more times to the right. You just select the reference. Important note, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to the screen and pin it so that y'all can see it. 
So we're going to take that reference and we're going to copy it. three times from this location. Now, I happen to know how far I want these to go. So I will go up down here and I'm going to use my DX command. It equals 2,000 feet to the right and 0 feet vertically. I hit enter and it copies them. So I have a total of four sheets. Now in your reference manager it copied them and if you notice since I put dash 1 it automatically numerically names the logical for each additional copy. That's important to keep in mind. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to check if our topo has the Eclipse file referenced into it. So we'll come over here to our topo. Uh, yep. And the clips file is not on. So let's reference the clips into it. You'll see why we're doing this in a moment. So now they're in there. And I hit this back key and we'll go back to our drawing, our sheets. Now first thing we're going to do, since I remember I said I like things in a group, we're going to attach all of our topos. Go ahead and cut up the topo for every sheet. So the first thing you'll do is attach a topo. And I'm going to call it topo1. And OK. And you're like, well, how am I going to you cut this up because I can't see my clips. Now remember that we put the clips in the topo drawing a while ago. And if you remember previous tutorials me talking about live nesting, if I live nest this, there they are. So it keeps me from having to bring in the clips and move them around and then changing the reference type to the topo. And you'll see what I mean about that in a moment. So it's simple enough. You do the exact same thing we did a while ago with the border. We're going to move it from that location. Oh, let's check something here. It is at a one scale. It's always important to check that. Sometimes if you have ref brought in references at another scale, it will hold that scale. So we're going to move it from there to there. And then rotate the reference by points from there and that point. To that point. So now it is refer it is ro moved and rotated to fit onto the sheet. I will use the fence command and place a block fence around this pane. And then in the reference dialog, we can do what is called clipping a reference. With a fence, I'll use the clip reference command. And since I used a fence, you could use an element if you had one active fence and then left click to accept and it will clip the reference. Just that easy. <coughs> and you repeat this process for the remainder of the sheets. So I will do one more for you. So I'm going to come to my references. I am going to copy the topo that I've already moved. Notice that it's called Topo 1, so as I copy them, it's going to automatically name it. But I'm going to copy it from my, the center of my next pane. I'm going to move it down here to the appropriate point. It looks like I snapped to the wrong point. Let's move that. Called it Topo 2. Let's move it. there and if you remember the first several sheets had the same rotation so I don't need to rotate this again and now I will clip it and there it is and you'll repeat this process until you get all your topos done 
now that all the topos are attached you can see that the clips are still showing so we'll come over here to our references if you select all of the topos at once and turn the live nesting off you now only have the topographic surveys now the second thing is depending on how many different drawings you have be it uh, a drawing that has edge of pavement, REQ, centerline, all that for roadway. You may have a drawing that is only the pipes for a drainage project. You may have a drawing that's the sewer or vice versa. An individual drawing for each one because if you remember in earlier tutorials we spoke about using different drawings or different aspects of design rather than having them all on a single master file. If you have used that methodology you need to attach each one of those individually but because you've already took the topo moved it spatially and rotated it and clipped it into the sheets you do not have to do that again what can be done is that you take all of the references that are already moved and rotated which in this case are our topos topo 1 through 8 remember the number 8 and you'll just copy them directly on top of each other so we're going to copy select somewhere in space and type the command dx equals zero which means move zero and hit the enter key. Give it a moment to think. And now in your reference manager you'll see that you have a topo 9 through 16. What we're going to do is take this starting with topo 9 if you double click the name it brings up the attachment dialog. You can browse and change the file long as these files are drawn in the same spatial location this methodology work. I'll change it to the REQ I'm going to call it REQ1 and hit OK and now my REQ which is only my stationing in this, prop for the, in this case is now in here and you'll do that for each one of these I'll do it a couple more times so just come over here find REQ this one's REQ2. You'll see that that's there. And one more time. And that one's over there. And it's just that simple. And you continue this process in groups. You do all of your REQ. And if you had a drain file, which was your storm drainage or something you do all of the drain and so forth and so on. The reason it's important to do that is if I come up here you'll notice that all my topos are together and eventually all my REQs will be together so it allows me to come up here to my topos I can select all of these at once and come down here and turn off all these points so I don't want the points to tick mark survey tick marks to show up in the sheets so I can go all the way up to there and it's off in every single reference if they had not been done in groups you would have had to found each one hold the control key and then selected them wherever they are which can become cumbersome going through and finding them all and that concludes the basics of cutting sheets